on Monday Night Football, DeMar Hamlin, he made a tackle on the Bengals wide receiver, T. Higgins. Now, in that event, he took a direct hit to his chest, and then he goes to the ground. He then gets up, he adjusts his face mask of his helmet, and then he visibly goes limp and falls to the ground. Medical staff, they attend to him, and he was initially moving his right arm, but then shortly after that, he went into cardiac arrest. Medical staff immediately start doing CPR, including the use of an AED, an automated external defibrillator. They do that to shock his rhythm, his heart rhythm, back into a normal heart rhythm. So he goes from ventricular fibrillation into a normal heart rhythm, which is most likely normal sinus rhythm. He was transferred to the University of Cincinnati Medical Center for further testing and treatment, and he's currently in critical condition. They also said he's intubated, meaning he has a breathing tube down his throat, which is a standard operating procedure when someone experiences a cardiac arrest. So this way you can control the airway and control the patient's breathing. And because of that, he's also being sedated. So that way he's sleepy and comfortable. Now there's no single test that can prove or disprove commodio cordis. So in order to make that diagnosis, it's a clinical diagnosis. And what we saw Monday night is exactly what happens when someone experiences commodio cordis. But more on that in a bit. So let's talk about commodio cordis in general, which means agitation of the heart in Latin. It's the medical term for sudden cardiac death, temporary sudden cardiac death, or maybe it's not always temporary, but basically it means in that moment, the heart dies for at least a little bit, and it's brought about by an anterior precordial blow, so basically right here, it's a blunt and non-penetrating type of blow. So it's not a knife or anything, it's a blunt force to specifically this area of the chest right where it overlies the heart. The primary arrhythmic event of a sudden death from commodio cordis is that chest blow, which is significant because it does not directly destroy the heart's structural integrity. In other words, the heart itself, the physical structure of the heart, the muscle is fine. It's just the electrical system gets uh, a shock, if you will. It's like a big electromagnetic wave, if you will, that just resets. It's uh, resetting the circuit breaker. Commodio cordis has been listed as one of the most frequent causes of sudden death in young athletes, while the actual prevalence is still unknown because it hasn't been studied that much. The National Commodio Cordis Registry was actually developed in the United States in the middle of the 1990s. More than 200 confirmed cases of commodio cordis have been documented since that registry was established. The registry has produced some noteworthy results. So for example, young people are most frequently affected. The average age of the registry, they were 15 years old. Only 9% of recorded cases were people over the age of 25. 95% of incidents that have been reported were male. So 9.5 out of 10 are male. 75% of the incidents have happened during sporting competition. 50% during competitive sports, and 25% during recreational sports. The majority of incidents have been associated with games using blunt projectiles and or a higher physical contact. So baseball, lacrosse, hockey, and yes, football. There's several crucial factors, including the timing of the hit during the cardiac cycle. Also, the position of the impact and even the velocity of the impact. They all have an impact on the risk of commodia cordis in experimental animals. The timing of chest wall impact within the cardiac cycle appears to be the most crucial factor in the development of ventricular fibrillation in cases with commodio cordis. There's a 20 to 40 millisecond, so there's a thousand milliseconds in one second. There's a 20 to 40 millisecond window of when there's the upslope of the T wave on that EKG where there's that ventricular repolarization. That's the only time frame during which this can result. So in other words, right in that instance of when the ventricles are about to relax, is which is right after the heart pumps that blood to the body, it's that very instant in that cardiac cycle of when commodio cordis occurs. So in other words, commodio cordis can only happen if there's a significant enough force to the area of the chest in that specific moment of the cardiac cycle. And the chances of a direct hit to the chest during this exact moment in the cycle is actually very, very small from a statistical standpoint. Although there isn't a known amount of chest trauma that causes commodio cordis, the projectile's velocity at impact seems to be significant. Now, according to an experimental model, the incidence of ventricular fibrillation rises to 70% as projectile velocity reaches 40 miles per hour. 
but at collision speeds beyond 40 miles per hour. Structural integrity, such as myocardial rupture, which is tearing of the heart muscle, and cardiac contusion, which is bruising of the heart muscle, those are more common while the likelihood of ventricular fibrillation goes down. So V-fib, which is ventricular fibrillation, it's more likely to be caused by harder objects. So smaller diameter spheres are more likely to result in V-fib than flat objects, at least in the experimental model. So in other words, a tennis ball isn't going to have the same kind of results with commodio cordis as would a baseball or uh, lacrosse. V-fib in commodio cordis, it appears to be induced by increased ventricular repolarization dispersion brought about by that blow. So the chest impact, it probably activates the ATP-sensitive potassium channel, which aids in the onset of V-fib. Now, due to a variety of reasons, younger people are more prone to getting commodio cordis. The most typical occurrence happens in sports with a dense projectile, baseball, lacrosse ball, or hockey puck, resulting in that specific area of blunt force trauma in that specific area of the chest. Although the reported types of chest strikes producing commodio cordis have varied, this is definitely the most typical scenario. But larger spheres and non-spherical objects can still do it, and it has happened in football. How do we make the diagnosis? The clinical scenario, which involves a witness blunt chest impact, followed by almost instantaneous collapse, the available EKG data showing that ventricular fibrillation, and the absence of structural heart disease or absence of myocardial trauma on the imaging studies, whether that's on the ultrasound of the heart, which is the echocardiogram, or on the CAT scan or the MRI of the heart. So if all those studies check out okay, and you get the exact clinical story of what I just described, that's how you make the clinical diagnosis of commodio cordis. With that said, you still wanna rule out other possibilities. That's why a thorough examination needs to be done with different tests in all commodio cordis survivors. You wanna check for structural heart disease, in particular, arrhythmogenic right ventricular dysplasia, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, anomalous coronary arteries, and you also want to look for Brugada syndrome and a couple other things. Although a blunt chest blow is necessary to cause ventricular arrhythmias in commodia cordis patients, any structural harm done to the body from this hit is limited to the chest wall. So this is a crucial distinction between sudden cardiac death from commodia cordis and then more serious damage that could result in a cardiac contusion or myocardial rupture, both of which have significant mortality rates. Commodio cordis, it's a primarily electrical event, and in the majority of sufferers, ventricular fibrillation is the first reported arrhythmia. With no recorded survival in the first 25 patients in the National Commodio Cordis Registry, survival rates in Commodio cordis have historically been very low. But more recent data reveal that survival is increasing because 58% of reported patients between 2006 and 2012 have survived, and thanks in large part to having AEDs and medical staff attending these athletic events. So the earlier recognition with EMS, emergency medical services, the increased amount of CPR training performed by bystanders, uh, earlier defibrillation, they all play a role in survival and prognosis. Surprisingly, both in the clinical setting and in the laboratory animal research, it has not been demonstrated that commercially available chest wall protectors can successfully prevent commodio cordis. The National Commodio Cordis Registry received reports of several of these victims who were wearing protective gear at the time of their incident. Can someone who survives this actually return to playing that same sport? Commodio Cordis is a rare occurrence, probably because so many precise mechanical factors must be achieved in order for this to happen. Timing, location, velocity of impact. There's a few animals in the experimental models that were specifically vulnerable to that chest blow development of getting V-fib. With that said, there's still an unknown whether there's an individual predisposition to getting commodio cordis. So at the end of the day, even though the chances of it happening again are very, very small, you certainly can't blame someone for not wanting to return to that sport. There's actually one case of a guy who survived commodio cordis on two separate occasions. As of right now, according to the most recent 2015 American Heart Association, American College of Cardiology consensus statement regarding the eligibility and disqualification recommendations for competitive athletes, for those who survive commodio cordis, they can only return to the sport if they go through all of the appropriate cardiac testing and are found to have no cardiac pathology. It's a great sign that they were able to do immediate CPR because that's the biggest factor 
in his prognosis. So I'm very hopeful and optimistic about his prognosis and of course thoughts and prayers to him and his family.